$3.1 million deal done. And today we're gonna find out how it happened. What's up, Flowchat fam? Chris here, CEO and co-founder of Flowchat, bringing you real entrepreneurs that are doing the real work and closing, in this case, the real deals. Now, we're gonna go through this deal together right here, right now. Uh, and But there's a few things I want you to know. This is in the roofing industry, but there's certain, why I wanted to do this episode, there's certain parts of this deal, this process, that we can implement into your sales process, things that we can learn and take with us and drive revenue together today, which is why it's going to be uh, very well said from our, our friend, fellow member, Cody. What's up, Cody? What's up, man? How are you? Dude, I'm doing awesome, man. I appreciate you uh, taking some time to bring us behind the curtain. Not, not, man, money is so funny. Uh, for like us entrepreneurs, I know you listening, watching, I feel like we all have a abnormal relationship with money compared to most. Some people are kind of afraid to talk about it, but there's others like yourself and listening to this that are like, I'm all in, let's talk numbers, you know, uh, give me the real story. So I'm excited to get into it with you, Cody. Absolutely, man. Like for me, it's, you know, money is nothing but options for me. You know, it's options for me. It's options for my family. And it revs me up to talk about it, right? Not just for what I'm able to create internally for my household, but what we're able to do for other people, which is, you know, what we're here to talk about today. Heck yeah. Heck yeah, man. So let's, I, I don't like to, <laughs> I don't like to be, uh, you know, when people dangle the carrot w with me and so I don't want to create content that does it. So we're going to get yeah. into it. Do $3.1 million deal done. This was for a client as you're sharing, we were talking about a little bit. Um, let, where do we start with this one? I mean, dude, I'd be happy if it would have been my $3.1 million deal, but like <laughs> I'm even more, I'm even more stoked that it was like one of our clients and, um, yeah, we can really start anywhere like maybe it makes sense to kind of like lay the land on what we do for people and then how to how this deal kind of came about and, and what let's the do it. You know, yeah play by play let's do it so um 30, foot view for us um i own a company called commercialroofer.com and we are a kind of a hybrid um agency slash consulting firm for uh roofing companies we kind of provide a vehicle for guys that are looking to move from the residential roofing world into the commercial world and all while we're teaching them all things you know um, like eos systems uh, sales marketing you know operations we are also generating opportunities for them on the back end so that we have like real world opportunities to work through you know as we're coaching them training them implementing all of these systems into their business make sense Love it. Yeah. So you're helping them with operations, building business and systems and uh, even acquiring. Love it. Yeah, absolutely. And so um, within that, like I said, on the back end, we're utilizing the tool of Flowchat to generate these opportunities. And so we've kind of laid out the process, which I'll be happy to kind of go in depth here in a, a few minutes and give you guys kind of the nuggets and, and steps on what we take um, to do that. But yeah, within that process, we were able to, you know, through our outreach, generate an opportunity for one of our roofing clients to bid on a project that was $3.1 million and just got word that he closed the deal. So he was Let's the, uh, he, he was the awarded contractor for that. So yeah, pretty gnarly. Um, pretty, you know, like I said, pretty happy for, for them. And like now they're, you know, they're obviously a client for life, right? We've, uh, <laughs> they're like this Cody guy, you know what? You can stick around Cody. I like you. Yeah. I like you. So, okay. So here, here's what I think like anyone listening, watching, uh, we want to go through the sales process. How can we help others with their sales process acquire Th this uh, is in commercial roofing? I would imagine, is this like a medium deal, small deal, large deal? Where does this fit? No, it's extremely large. Um, okay. I would say like, a average ticket. If we look at all of the opportunities that we've created for people, a lot of times there's our average ticket is like 26,000 or 29,000. Okay. Um, however, it's like, some, you know, a lot of times we're generating like small repairs or ways for these guys to get their foot in the door with property managers, uh, building yeah. owners, things of that nature. So there's small ticket stuff, but then you also have like the extreme of like these $3.1 million. Yeah. Deals. Yeah. They, so, this, so like, this is a larger deal. So anyone listening, if you want to close that large deal, this is where you want to lean in, uh, and close those lar larger contracts. We'll stretch your brain a little bit. Okay. 
how, well, let's talk sales cycle. How long did it take to close? Was this just, oh, reach out, oh, happen to catch me at the right time in the buying process and let's go, or is this a longer buying cycle? Yeah, it's a longer buy, buying cycle. Like anything, when you're dealing with, you know, multi six, seven, eight figure um, numbers, it's like there are multiple, multiple stages or multiple decision makers, right? There's typically boards involved or, you know, like um, multiple contractors, developers, th things of that nature that uh, architects that are signing off on, on different parts of the project. So um, I think um, if I was to, from the time we generated the opportunity for, to the award, I think it was a three to four month process. It's three to four months. That's what I was kind of curious to hear. And how many decision makers and or influencers were involved in the process? Um, realistically. So once we teed up the opportunity and we passed it off to our client, we were kind of like out of the loop from there, right? Like we yeah. gave them some feedback on like, the prop, you know, making sure they're bidding it for profitability, things of that nature. But as far as who they submitted submitted it to, or what conversations they had, I, I wouldn't be able to give okay. like a real honest, um, you know, input there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no worries, no worries there. Uh, more yeah. than one, we know that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so three to four months, multiple decision makers. And w did this? Um, okay, usually it's top down or or bottom up, right? Uh, did you yeah. happen to catch one of the, like the decision maker? Um, yeah. Or, okay. So you went right, right for the top. Yeah, exactly. So okay. um, the way that things typically work in like the new construction world is typically there is like a prime contractor, right? The general contractor that yeah. is, has been awarded the entire project, right? So they're responsible for all of the trades, the foundation, the, you know, framing, the, uh, mechanicals, you know, literally top to bottom, the entire project, right? Hold Development. Yep. Um, and so we went straight to those guys. Right? That was okay. what this, this campaign was targeted towards. So we were targeting guys that do um, custom contracting, custom general contractors. And we utilized the platforms of LinkedIn. And we also leverage uh, Facebook groups really heavily. So okay. I'll be happy to like break down the pipelines here in just a moment. Sure. But yeah, that's that's pretty much how it is. Like we go after the guys that have already been awarded the whole projects. And then those guys are typically looking for if they don't have, you know, if they don't have somebody that they've utilized for years and years, um, they're looking for the contractors to come in and be the specialty contractors. So they're looking for those electricians. They're looking for those yeah. um, plumbers, the roofers, the, the brick masons. Right. Yeah. And so, um, you know, what we do is, you know, we, we work specially, you know, especially for roofers, but this, the, our methods could be utilized in any form or fashion in the commercial construction world. Yeah. 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 There's definitely, I mean, you and I connecting a little bit, me hearing some of this, I was like, oh man, there's some really good sales patterns in here for people. And, and look, I would assume most people listening, watching this, you've sold, you've sold a thing or two in your day, but hearing yeah. when someone's winning, it's just like, number one, celebrate them. Like it's, it's good to like, Hey, something's good happening with the ability to, to not stick, be stuck in your own stuff and just celebrate with other people when they're winning op opens great doors to make it easier for you to start stepping into your victory and, and things that you're winning into. So I just want to thank you for letting us come celebrate you and, and, you know, yeah. on this breakthrough. Um, but there's other little things that we can pull from this. So I do have a few more questions. I like that you went to platform, LinkedIn, Facebook groups. Are you sending emails and SMS as well? So for prospecting? Um, yeah. So we have two different methods of uh, doing prospecting for our clients. Okay. Method number one is we do direct outreach through um, LinkedIn and Facebook. Okay. okay. So yep. We have custom built uh, pipelines that we've built out within your guys' platform uh, to do that. We also have what's considered a multi-touch strategy, okay? Nice. And a lot of guys do, um, a lot of guys in the commercial world do direct mail, but they do it, I mean, it drives me insane to see the, the way that most guys do it, right? Um, <laughs> they send out these like used car dealership looking flyers and it's like they, they just like spend these thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on what I would consider junk mail. Yeah, and here, here so, you throw this away. <laughs> <laughs> got it yeah. and so um we do direct mail a little bit differently and then um, we have a process where we do follow up through um, an email sequence and 
um, we don't actually make the calls for our clients, but we give them the scripting around how to do like a warm phone call follow up. Cool. And and it works really well. And then we do multiple rounds of that. So every like 30 to 60 days, we'll, you know, if we send out three to 4,000, uh, you know, touch points of those, then we just reiterate that to the same list and recycle the same list three or four times yeah. until we feel like we've worn that list out. There's a couple huge things that you mentioned there. Number one, you're using the phrase touch point. It, throw, throw, you know, you, throw me, throw anyone listening, watching into this and, and into any industry. If you don't have at least seven, ideally at least 13 touch points, meaning touch point, meaning some type of contact, direct mail, you know, they looked at, they looked at it, they touched it. Even if they didn't read it, it's still a touch point, a call left a message, right? Listen to all of it. Listen to two seconds of it. It's still a touch point. You send a text, you send an email, they read it, they open it, touch point. So if you don't even have 13 of those to some, for someone to even possibly touch, <laughs> you don't like yeah. step one, maybe have 20 touch points so that they get at least 13 of them. 80 plus percent of the sales are coming from that amount of effort. So tip generally the sales processes that I, I see in hundreds of companies, I'm like, we, we have it, you know, we've already lost because we don't have enough activity here to even generate remotely the desired outcome or result. So I thought that touch point was really big that you hit on. The well, other one is, like, yeah, go, go. On that same topic, man, it's like, I, it's hard for me when a lot of times when I get clients come in, they are very skeptical about building out that 10, 15 uh, touch, you know, touch points. They're like, oh, we don't want to, we don't want to be known as the, the guys that are spamming them. And I'm like, hang on, like, let's take two steps back. And let's look at how many times it took me to get you as a client of mine. Because <laughs> yeah. like, dude, roofers are busy, right? I'm sure like everyone, everyone is. Yeah. Is busy. Yeah. But, but like roofers in general, like they, you know, a lot of the guys we're dealing with, they are wearing the hat of the salesperson, the hat of ordering materials, you know, scheduling the workers, <laughs> like running appointments, like everything in, in between. Yeah. And it's noisy. Like, so I utilize that as like, a. Uh, I'm like, hang on, like, let's take a look at how many times I had to contact you to get you as a client and it worked for me to get you. So let's just try it my way and we'll, we'll see how this works out. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm very familiar with, uh, with having that conversation. Yeah. And you, you also were mentioning follow-ups every 30 days, you know, we're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. It's, you know, same process, but Hey, could have been mm -hmm. the wrong time, you know, right people, right message plus right time is the trying, you know, the triangle oh, yeah. of opportunity or something. I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. a good formula at minimum. Uh, so the, yeah, those touch point follow up. Hey, you're, you've got direct mail. Yes. It can, in, depending on industry, it can be a good move. I, there's some massive direct mail companies still to this day, profitable, yeah. crushing it. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, we're not doing direct mail. <laughs> it would be interesting to do for software, but obviously, yeah. Uh, in your industry makes sense. So you have email, text, and we're doing SMS, uh, or sorry, uh, DMs as well, LinkedIn and Facebook. Let's talk about uh, outreaching on social because while we all will be guilty of ignoring the inbox for email <laughs> or like we get the text and we're like, how did you get my number? Who is this uh, type stuff? You know, on social, we can go look at the profile. Oh, that's who this, oh, actually I was just bidding for this. So I was just curious to hear your take on how uh, DMs for this particular sales process have been going. Yeah, it's been going great. Um, so we have clients, you know, when I take a look at the roofing industry as a whole, there's really multiple sectors. Okay. And I guess this, we could talk construction generally um, because it's the same way, but there is the new construction sector. There's the, you know, re-roof sector or reconstruction sector. There's the government sector, there's, you know, municipalities, there's every, and everything in between, right? The storm restoration industry. And so for us, we definitely see trends of like better responses to our messages. And actually, do you, do you, are you cool if I just kind of like lay out our process? Because it's very Please. simple. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm taking uh, I'm taking notes. <laughs> yeah. so, very simple for us, right? We go into... I'll, I'll talk LinkedIn first. Okay. So we go in and we actually don't even use, utilize sales nav. Um, we just utilize the normal like search boxes and search features within the, the LinkedIn platform. Okay. And so we go in there and we may search, um, you know, warehouse manager. That's a, that's a good one for us. 
cool. and we'll search uh, warehouse manager. We'll tell LinkedIn, hey, we only want you to uh, show us people that are warehouse managers. And we want you to search a geographical location of Syracuse, New York. And um, what happens there is we then get a list of three to 4,000, sometimes 10,000, depending on the area, right? If we're in Austin, Texas versus a rural location, um, you know, obviously the numbers are different, but like whatever that number is, we then import them to our pipeline back into Flowchat. Got it. From there, we qualify them. So we do have a stage of qualification, you know, for us, it's really simple. It's like, Hey, are they the type of person or do they hold the job title of who we think that, you know, of what we thought they were and are they in the geographical location? Got you it. check those two boxes and don't have any other red flags, um, which I can't think of what our red flag list is off the top of our, uh, off the top of my head, but we do have a red flag list. Um, sure. It, it, if they check all the boxes for us and don't check any of the red flag boxes, then we move them into qualified. Yeah. There we make the connection. We have three or four uh, stages of engagement and we send, and within the stages of engagement, we're sending a message. Okay. We navigate a script. We've written scripts for each type. I think 19 different types of people that were, um, you know, essentially like targeting okay. and we navigate that conversation. The person doesn't respond. We have two stages of follow up. If they don't follow or if they don't respond after two stages of follow up and the initial message, then like we just mark them as unresponsive and okay. move, move, move on. on to every yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so like um, what I was saying is like we have a really good. I think we have like an eighteen to nineteen percent response rate on the front end. Um, if I remember correctly, that that was probably a week or two back that I actually looked at that. Um, from the initial response. And then from there, we are booking probably 8%, I'd say, of the conversations we're having, um, we're actually booking uh, appointments with. And cool. so- with highly qualified people. With highly qualified people. So we tell our clients, you know, since most of these deals are higher ticket, um, you know, or if, here's the thing, Chris is like, even if we generate a low ticket um, opportunity for somebody, yeah, it is a way for them to get their foot in the door and create um, a connection with that building owner or yeah. that yeah. property manager. And there can be multiple repairs or low ticket transactions before they get the, the, um, you know, the big ticket, the, the, re the roof replacement typically. But the thing is, is like, you're, you're just, you're building that no like and trust as you perform those low you're getting paid to build no like and trust with these people and then when it's time to replace their roof who else are they going to go with outside of somebody you know they're not going to go out with somebody outside of who they already know like and trust and that's kind of our strategy well said well said yeah, yeah. uh how do you do more work do more work well <laughs> how do i do that sometimes it's yeah taking those lower lower bid jobs and building the relationship because ultimately it comes down to not just who you know but who knows you and mm -hmm. uh, building building quality relationships. All right. So uh, in this process, uh, mm -hmm. you 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 described we got to find the right people first. Yes. There's a qualification process. You know, That's right. who who is this good for? Who is not good for us? Who can we serve? Who can we not serve? You're clear on that, which is a big step. Hopefully. Uh, that's hitting somebody right now. Um, and then the, the third one is you're re you're sending a message. Uh, you're, mm -hmm. you're approaching them and in, in the approach, if they do not reply, you're prepared for follow-up. Um, but it's, it's only two messages. You're not like, you know, uh, blowing people up and this is over a period of time. Uh, so, so you're good there. Um, uh, I like it like that you, you covered process and, uh, you, Hey, if, if it ends up being the last thing that I really like that you said is just taking the job. But the job is not only the job, it's also future jobs. And it yeah. also oftentimes in sales process, what we see is, you know what? I really liked how you showed up here. Um, hey, you won this bid, you didn't win this bid, but I know Joey, I know Sarah, and they were just working on a project, you know, three blocks from here. Let me make you an intro because they were just needing somebody. Let me hook you up. That's right. And we see that. So yeah, we see that in the same situation that you just stated. But then we also see like a lot of the connections that we are making are for, like I said, those prime contractors, those tier one type contractors that are getting awarded the entire projects. Yeah. But like those guys aren't just 
they're not just building one condo association, right? They, they don't have just one project. They have multiple projects and the same deal with uh, property managers. They don't manage just one property, right? right? They have a portfolio of property. So yeah, I, you know, we talk about a lot of times like, yes, we are doing lead generation, but really we're building your network and we're, you know, building um, really an infrastructure to the opportunities of, of what you'll have down the road. Yeah. So, so huge to hear. So if it's like, if you, you know, we've, we've got the roofing industry that we're talking about commercial to be specific, um, you know, with Cody today, but as you're listening, watching, there are the influencers and there are like, we, I like to call them the spiders of the industry where you get into their web <clears throat> who, where they've already built no like and trust with the client that you're looking future client that you're looking to connect with. So really powerful example, Cody, I appreciate you wa walking through that. Um, yeah. it, it just, oh, I was just having a conversation, you know, last night with another friend entrepreneur and he's like, Hey, what, you know, he was describing the same, same pattern. We're kind of relooking at it, you know, for flow chat, for his business, because it's a, it's a really helpful, um, you know, thought to really scale and grow a company. But the big one is that I think people miss is, Hey, I did 10 outreaches. I booked three calls, I closed one deal. I'm making up ratios and numbers, right? But sometimes it's typically around there, right? And it's like, I closed one deal from this effort. It really should be, I closed one deal, but I got two to three referrals. Yes. Maybe maybe immediately, maybe over the next three to uh, you know six to 12 months. So it's really like, uh, and that compounds. So if you re like, you get the networking, virtual networking, um, and it's not always like, okay, well, you know, you know, who are the three people that you think, you know, it's not always like that cut and dry, but when you nail that skill and get the process down, man, I got four deals out of just 10 outreaches and you, man, now I get more deals and outreaches I'm doing, uh, that ratio does occur. So I don't know, hopefully that helps somebody. Yeah. <laughs> No, here, and if this helps visualize it a little bit better, so I just explained how we utilize FlowChat for our clients, but it is the, um, it's the only way that we get clients currently. Uh, we're utilizing our same methods to obtain our clients, right? And yeah. there was a girl that fell, uh, a woman that fell into our funnel, and she wasn't like, uh, for whatever reason, she got past the qualification, but she wasn't qualified, right? So we ended yeah. up having, a, I had a conversation. I befriended this lady and she was in a group setting like webinar Zoom the other day and somebody mentioned they were trying to break into commercial roofing or they were struggling to, to get their sales team to generate opportunities or, or something along those lines. And she mentioned my name in this Zoom, like dropped it in the chat. She sent me a screenshot of, of it and said like, hey, uh, just wanted you, like she sent me an email basically saying like, hey, I wanted you to know I'm dropping your name everywhere. And I said, replied, said, oh, cool, thanks. You know, I did not expect much from it. Next thing I know, the guy that she had sent that to was on my calendar. And, you know, he actually just came in as a client yesterday. So it's yes, like, let's you go. Know, you never know who you're going to meet, like through these processes. And it is truly a, you know, even, even more than just a lead generation tool. It's like a network builder and um, it we're reaping the rewards of it. Yeah, man, do that. Oh, that's so cool. That's so powerful. Uh, so everyone be encouraged, you know, whoever you're connecting with, oh, you're not qualified. Like, you don't know, like kindness is free. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it like, I don't know, there's something about it where it, it comes back eventually in one way or another. Um, not like, yes, like in the story you just described, like that literally happens over and over and over again. It also doesn't always happen that way, but it does happen in one way or another. Anyway, hopefully being, if you're, if you're, you know, having a rough day, be encouraged to at least, you know, say hi or go just that little muster up that little extra effort energy to be just a little bit kinder to your, your team members, uh, to the prospects and sometimes strangers that you're connecting with. Cause you never know where the next deal is totally. coming from. Um, uh, Cody, uh, people leaning into this, you you clearly you helping clients close millions of dollars in deal. Uh, if they want to connect with you more personally from the stuff you're sharing, where's a good place to find you? Yeah, you know, I've really um, honed in and kind of focused on one channel right now. Um, of course, I have an Instagram, but um, for me, it's Facebook. All of my effort, Facebook. energy, time, and um, everything that we're doing right now is on Facebook. So you can find me at facebook.com slash Cody dot. Klein.roofer.
well timed. The ticker was like right there, <laughs> right when you're saying it, dude. I was like, let's say it, let's say it. Anyway, yeah. So re- reach out to Cody if you want to further connect. Uh, we in in the Flow Chat community, we definitely want to uh, encourage people to connect. Uh, to like, there's all kinds of problems in the world, <laughs> and so there's some really great talent where you guys can get together, uh, create value together. Uh, so Cody, I appreciate you doing exactly that, coming out and and sharing yeah. uh, today. Totally. And I'll kind of like, you know, leave this last, last token of thought here for everybody is like, um, I've made kind of alluded to mentioning, you know, I do focus on roofers and it's simply because I'm kind of a roofing nerd, right? I had a, a roofing company for the last 11 years of my life. I exited through acquisition and now like this is my new business. I am not opposed to if there's other people in other, you know, that want to niche down on other trades and kind of run this agency slash consulting model, um, you know, never opposed to having a conversation around any sort of like JV joint venture type deals. So awesome, man. Yeah, I appreciate you putting it out there. And dude, I didn't realize you had an exit. Maybe we'll have to have you back on. We'll talk about how that went because that's that's kind of a thing. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that was a that was an eight month negotiation type deal. But yeah, we can dive into that whenever. Yeah, man. We'll have to. Just, I only have one exit so far myself. Um, but man, like if you go like going through the process is like, dude, you learn so much because oh, there's just so much emotion personally, business wise, who you're you're talking with, how it goes down. It's off the table. It's back on the table. Usually leads to a crazy story. Be interested to hear yours. I appreciate you coming yeah. on today. Yeah, likewise. Hey, and I appreciate all of you, your time, your attention. It means something to me. It means a ton to our uh, community. That's why we're only, we curate the best, the real entrepreneurs that are getting real results. And we'll actually talk about just what's going on because uh, it can be normal, it can be fun. And being an entrepreneur also can be lonely, but it doesn't have to be. And this is the place where you get some great content. We'll see you guys next time. 